to go. Yeah. Not the same, no, no, no. Got the rain, had to grow. Don't chase the fame anymore. No being lame anymore. Don't fornicate anymore. No doing drugs anymore. Don't feel the pain anymore. There's so much more in store. I know you know all the evil things I used to do from way back. Had to leave it all behind, cause the most high don't play that. Now you understand why I switched it up like that. Switch it up, switch it up. Like For the love of TGIF, I praise to the Most High God. Thank God it's Friday. Right. All right. Uh, the Lord then blessed us with another opportunity to bring forth His Word. Uh, IUIC Arkansas holding it down for Deacon Laba Hammer Time. All right. You got myself, Officer Emmanuel. Officer Jonah. All right. So before we get started, let's go ahead and send up the prayers real quick. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 Amen. And all praise to the most high God. Uh, the name of the class tonight is applying the first commandment. Uh, just hearing the title, you may think, you know, the class could be going into this or into that or I'm going to deal with this. Or, uh, I'm going to let y'all know right now this class is going to be a little different. It may not be what you expect, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but uh, we're going to deal with applying the first commandment. It's the reason why the word applying is in the title, all right? In order to keep the first commandment, it's a certain way, certain spirit you got to have in order to truly apply it, all right? So we're going to deal with that tonight, all right? The spirit of the Lord. So let's start with Mark. Chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, start at verse 28. The book of Mark, chapter 12 and verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Right, and so Christ just cut some people up or whatever. You had a scribe observing or whatever, he was impressed by how Christ dealt with him, and he stepped up to ask Christ a question. What is the first commandment? Now, when you look at scribes, scribes were the people, you know, they grew up in a the law. They knew the laws. They had wisdom. They had understanding, all right? So he asked Christ, which is the first commandment of all? Read. And Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. Hmm. This is the first commandment. Now, you know, some people, you might have it thought, well, I thought the first commandment was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It is. <laughs> That's in there. That's... It's saying the same thing, all right? But I want us to, to focus in on something real quick. Read that one more time, verse 30. Verse 30. 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. So notice the word that it keeps repeating is all. <laughs> all your mind, all your heart, all your strength, all of it. The Lord said you got to love him with all of it. All right, real quick, get Exodus 34. Because, you know, we quick to say we love God or whatever. The mindset of our people is this. Because you ask the average black person, do they love God? They're going to say, yeah. The mindset of our people is, you know, I got to at least say that I love God. Me not being able to say that, it don't sound right. You know what I'm saying? So we got to at least be able to say it. But when it come to us, can't anybody, can't know anybody just say that they love you. You know what I'm saying? In your mind, in order for somebody to say that they really love you, it got to be, you know, uh, you know, what's that saying? What have you done for me lately? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We understand when it come to us, somebody got to show, somebody got to prove that they love you. In its levels to how much someone loves you, right? We're going to deal with that. All right, but first read that. 34 and 14. The book of Exodus, chapter 34 and verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Now, like I said, that, that all goes with the first commandment, having no other God before him, worshiping no other God. And it ain't just talking about, which we're going to get into, it ain't just talking about idols, you know, uh, where... You know, other gods like Buddha, uh, white man, Jesus, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It ain't just talking about literal other gods or what the nations deem as gods. It's deeper than that, all right? But it says the Lord is a jealous God. His name is jealous. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we got to understand what God we claim that we love. We love, we say that we love a jealous God. When you think about the word jealous, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What does this? Can we look up the definition of jealous real quick? I ain't had that one pulled up. Just pull up the definition of jealous. The Lord is a jealous God. The Lord is a jealous God. Can we get the definition of jealous up there? I right, read that. Jealous, feeling or showing. Or, let me see. Uh, read the second one. Yeah, feeling or showing. Feeling or showing suspicion of someone's unfaithfulness in a relationship. Right. So you gotta notice in the quotations under it, it say a jealous boyfriend. So you gotta think a jealous boyfriend. <laughs> he don't want like if he see his girl looking another way. It's a problem. If you glance at another man, it's a damn problem. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's a jealous boyfriend or a jealous husband, right? I want your undivided attention. You better not even make it seem like you got any interest in anybody else. That's the guy that we say that we love, <laughs> right? That's the guy that we say that we love. He is a jealous God, and he will be suspicious of your unfaithfulness. All right? Go back, go back to Mark 12. Read 30 again. The book of Mark, chapter 12 and verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With what? With all thy heart. With all your heart. Read. And with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And with all your strength. All of your strength. Why would it take strength to love God? All of your strength. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into it. Read on. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. This is something I've been meditating on for a while. And just to self-examine, you know, where I'm at in this truth, things of that nature. And you... 
All you got to do is start with the first commandment to be able to truly examine yourself. Do I love God with all my heart, (laughs) all my mind? Do I put forth all my strength when it comes to serving the Lord? All you got to do is start there to really examine yourself. This is what this class is for. It's for self-examination. All right? So, do you love, you got to ask yourself, do you love the Lord your God with all your mind? Do you put forth all of your strength? That's the first commandment. All right? Keep reading. Verse 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than thee. Right. So it said the second commandment is like. It's like it. They similar. They really tie in together. Because no man has seen God. Your brother is made in the image of God. You are. You show that you mindful of God by the way that you treat your brother. So, you know, they tie in together. All right. Read on. Verse 32. And the scribe said unto him, well, master. Thou hast said the truth, uh-huh. for there is one God, and there is none other but he. Uh-huh. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. This scribe got some wisdom. Because you know, that was the, the stumbling block for a lot of the Israelites when it came to Christ. They did not want to give up the sacrifices, the offerings. They thought that was how they drew near to God. When no, if you love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, that's how you're going to draw near to the Lord. All right? That's better than burnt offerings and sacrifices. So this scribe has some wisdom. Let's see what Christ responded to him. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, uh-huh. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. But what you said, <laughs> knowing that we got to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and our neighbor as ourself, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Basically, bro, you damn near on point, right? But we know, you know, the commandments, applying these commandments got to be coupled with the faith of Christ. All right, you got to believe on your Lord and Savior that he died for your sins and he rose again to give us power to be resurrected and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, he told the scribe, you're not far from the kingdom of God. So it's showing you what it means to be kingdom minded, right? If your mind is really on the kingdom of heaven, you're going to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. All right? Because he is a jealous God. Get First John 5 and 3. So this, this precept right here sums up what it means to love God. But a lot of times we read it, and it really go over our own head. And it's, you know, a lot of it is Christianity, things of that nature. But watch this. Read what you got. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God. So this is how you show that you love God. This is how you show that you're applying that great commandment. Read. That we keep his commandments. That you keep everything that he told you to do. That you follow his instructions. You do what he say. That's how you show that you love God. Read. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. A lot of times when I teach people, you know, I be, you know, we we, we be on the street. We be trying to put the people to the test because they be thinking like, they be thinking that they not far from the kingdom of God. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So I be like, well, the commandments not grievous. Now, a lot of times we be like, we, we bring out this scripture and we say, you know, it ain't hard to. Uh, not grievous meaning it's not hard. Like, it ain't hard to stop eating pork. It ain't hard to put on a dress, sister. It ain't hard, you know, this and this and that. But today, we're going to dig a little more deeper into that, that bottom part. The commandments are not 
Grievous. Can we pull up the definition of grievous real quick? The commandments not grievous. Read that. Grievous. Causing or characterized by severe pain, suffering, or sorrow. Right. Read the second one. Oppressive. Oppressive. So the commandments is not oppressive. It ain't gonna it ain't nothing in the commandments that's gonna make you bug the hell out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's nothing that's too damn hard for you to do. Now a Christian can read that and they can interpret it. The commandments not grievous. That means that it shouldn't it there isn't any work. Like, that means I, I don't have to do any works. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no grief. It's, no, that's not what it's saying. All right? But remember, it said the commandment's not grievous. Real quick, go down to synonyms. Scroll down. Yeah. Read the synonyms. Synonyms. Bitter. Brutal. Burdensome. 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 Burdensome is a synonym for grievous. We going to deal with that today. All right? God said his commandments are not burdensome. Right? Now, that's easy to say till we put in certain situations and we feel some type of burden. But understand, it's not the commandments that's burdening you. <laughs> All right? From there, get to Rock chapter 6. Sirach chapter 6, verse 22. The book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 22. For wisdom is according to her name, uh -huh. and she is not manifest unto many. She is not manifest unto many. Wisdom. Real hold that. Get wisdom of Solomon 7 and verse 28. So what wisdom got to do with loving God? All right, read that. The book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 28. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Right. So if you ain't dwelling with wisdom, God won't love you. <laughs> There's dealing with the love of God. Right? So wisdom is very important. That's how you're going to draw near to the Lord, through wisdom. Go back to Sirach 6. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse, what verse was it? 22. 22. For wisdom is according to her name. And she is not manifest unto many. Right. Wisdom is not manifest unto many. Now, Scripture saying that God loves none that dwelleth with wisdom. Well, wisdom is not manifest unto many. That means that there's proof that everybody don't love God like they say. <laughs> everybody don't love God like they say. If that was the case then wisdom will be manifested to many. No, that's not the case. All right, but read on. Give ear, my son. Receive my advice and refuse not my counsel. And put thy feet into her fetters. Put thy feet into her fetters. Now, in verse 22, it said wisdom is according to her name, right? So to her, there is talking about wisdom. Now, God said put your feet. Unto her fetters. Read. And thy neck into her chain. And your neck into her chain or her yoke. Read on. Bow down thy shoulder. Bow down your shoulder. So this is going into labor. This is going into servitude. Think about it. It's saying fetters, chains, bowing down your shoulder. That sound like slavery. When we read the commandments are not oppressive. Right. <laughs> But it's saying here that we got to we gotta bow down. We got to serve. We got to put our wrists, our necks, and all that into subjection of wisdom. Read on. And bear her and be not grieved with her bonds. Be not grieved with her bonds. Right? Let's look up the definition. Of, pull up the definition of bonds. So it said, be not grieved with her bonds. That goes back to what we read in 1 John 5 and 3. The commandments are not grievous. So why is it telling you here, why is it telling you to be not grieved with her bonds? All right. Uh, go down to number two. 
Read the one that say literary. Bonds, ropes, chains, or other restraints used to restrict someone's movement or hold something in place. So ropes, chains, or other restraints used to restrict someone's movement. So now it's telling you that wisdom has buns. You can't be grieved with her buns, meaning what? With wisdom, with loving God, it comes with restrictions. It's certain things that you can't do. It's certain things that you you can't have. You are restricted from things, all right? That's what comes with the love of God, right? And remember, God is a jealous God. So you know it's going to be restrictions. But don't be grieved with those restrictions, right? From there, go to Mark 10. Mark 10, verse 17. Be not grieved with her bun. So what would grieve you? What would grieve you from wisdom, the restrictions that come with loving God? What would grieve you? All right, Mark 10, 17. The book of Mark, chapter 10, and verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Right. So man came to him running, right? Lord, good master, what did I do? What can I do to receive eternal life? Read. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is no man good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered unto him, Master. Right. So that was Christ's response. You know the commandments. You asking me what to do to get eternal life, but you know the commandments. Meaning what? That's what you got to do. The commandments. Read on. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Right. I've been doing this. I've been doing everything that you said from my youth. Right? Okay, read on. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him. So the Lord looked at him. He looking at him, he like, okay, okay. I, I, I. Sure, right? Sure. Read on. And said unto him, one thing thou lackest. So the Lord looked at him. He looked at him in the spirit, and he knew, look, it's one thing that you lack. In order to get that eternal life. It's one thing that you got to improve. It's one thing that you lack. Read. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Uh huh. And come, take up the cross and follow me. Now you got you to gotta ask yourself, right? If, if you love God, well, let, let's, let's bring it cornerly, right? Uh, let's say you got a spouse. You love them. You love your spouse, right? Your spouse say, all right, we need, uh, you know, we short with the groceries or whatever. You know, sell. Can we, you know, put, what's something we can sell? Can you sell that watch? <laughs> and then that, that $500 watch you got, can you sell that upon that so we can have some money to eat, Right? That's your spouse. You love them. You're going to be like, yes, we got to eat. Well, you should, right? It shouldn't be hard for you to give that up if you love that person and you're concerned with their well-being, right? So when it comes to the Lord, when it comes to God, it's the same thing, all right? And the Lord wants us to love one another and look out for each other. So He t Christ tells the, the man, hey, listen. Sell what you have, give it to the poor. He addressing the thing that he lacks. This is what you got to do to improve in the thing that you lack. Be charitable, right? Well, watch this. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. Went away what? Grieved. Went away grieved. Grieved. <laughs> so he, so we read in 1 John 5 and 3, the commandments... They not grievous. So what made him grieved? 
What grieved him in this instant? Was it the commandment that grieved him, which contradicts the scriptures? Which, what was it that grieved this man and caused him to turn his back on the Son of God? Read. For he had great possessions. He had what? Great possessions. He had great possessions. So, mind you, a lot of us say that we love God. The commandment's not grievous. But do we all keep the commandments without flaw? Do we all not struggle and fight daily? Why is that? Why do, why do we find it hard to do certain things for the Lord? It's because we have things in our life, things and people in our life, you know, possessions that make loving God grievous. It's not the commandments. It's the things that pertain to you and to your flesh that make applying that first commandment grievous. All right? So from there, get Ezekiel 14, verse 1. Because like I said, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It's the reason why I kept saying all. <laughs> the Lord is a jealous God. So anything that gets in the way of you loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, that thing is an idol. That thing is a lowercase g God to you. All right, Ezekiel 14, verse 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, and verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. So notice, it said, Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me. Right? Now remember, the first scripture we pulled, who had came to Christ? A scribe. Right? Then in what we just read, the brother said he been kept keeping all of them commandments from his youth. So now, the scripture right here that we're reading is dealing with elders of Israel, people that been that grew up knowing the commandments, learning the commandments, and they had came to the status of an elder in Israel. But let's see what the Lord tells Ezekiel about these elders. Read. Son of man. These men have set up their idols in their hearts. So these elders that are sitting before you, they have set up idols in their heart, in their mind. Read. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Uh-huh. Should I be inquired of at all by them? So it said they put the stumbling block of their iniquity in their face. Hmm. Idols in your heart, stumbling block of iniquity before your face. So, real quick, get Job. Get Job 15. Yeah, we're going to come back. But it's say idols in your heart. The heart is talking about your mind. Now, the first commandment is to love God <laughs> with all your heart, right? So, this means, like I said, it's not just dealing with stuff made with hands or stuff that you can worship or what other nations call gods. An uh, idol in your heart can be food. It could be social media. It could be uh, the gym. It could be, a, it could be a, a lot of different things that in your mind, you put that above the Lord. We're going to explain, but read, read what you got. Job 15. Job 15, verse 12. And this is why I said this is a self-examination class. All right? Read what you got. The book of Job, chapter 15, and verse 12. Why doeth thine heart carry thee away? And what do thine eyes wink at? So the question is, and this is what we got to all ask ourselves when we alone, when we looking in the mirror, when we meditating. You know what I'm saying? When we trying to. See what we got to do to build our spirit up and get closer to God. Why does your heart carry you away? Your heart carry you away. And what do your eyes wink at? I mean, what are the things that you overlook? 
right? And a, and a lot of times, it be the things that no one else can see. That's why I say idols in your heart. The only person that knows what's in your heart is the Lord. Everybody else, they can only guess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We not mind readers, right? But an uh, idol in your heart, something that you're winking at, something that you're overlooking, that's something that you're not able to present a certain way towards man. It's what the Lord knows between you and him that you're not dealing with. You're not purging out. You ain't trying to mortify. You see what I'm saying? You got to be able to identify that thing. That's step number one. Identifying the problem, the hindrance. Read. That thou turnest thy spirit against God. That you turn your spirit against God. So it's things that carry your heart away, that your eyes wink at, that turn your spirit against God. Meaning what? You break the first commandment. These is idols in your heart. These is things that you deal with, that you put above the Lord, that hinder you from serving him with all your strength. Right? Go back to Ezekiel. Go to chapter 8, though. Ezekiel chapter 8. So, like I said, we got to pose that question to ourselves. And that's a daily thing. And you got to be extensive because it's stuff that's surface level that men can see. Right? And it's things that go deeper and deeper and deeper. All right, Ezekiel 8 verse 1. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 1. Come on. And it came to pass in the sixth year. In the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me. And the elders of Judah sat before me. So it's just like chapter 14. The elders sat before Ezekiel, right? But watch this. Watch what the Lord show Ezekiel concerning these elders. All right, jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold... A hole in the wall. Right, a hole in the wall. You got to think, a hole in the wall, you know what I'm saying? It's, some, it's not the size of a doorway, right? So it's, you know, something small. So we saw a hole in the wall, read. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. So now get through that little hole. Dig that little hole right there and dig in there. <laughs> dig in there, read. And when I had digged in the wall. Behold, a door. So when you got past the little hole in the wall, now you got a whole door. But you notice the word that he used, he said dig. You see what I'm saying? So you got to, it ain't, you know, because that's the thing. We got pride. A lot of us deal with pride. And pride won't let you get to the point where you really dig in deep down in your spirit to really... Purge yourself from within to fully draw near to the Lord, to fully serve God with all your soul. Because you're not digging deep enough in your soul. So the Lord is showing Ezekiel something. Remember, these is elders, elders of Israel. Read. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. Behold the wicked abominations that they do here behind this hole in the wall, behind this door. Look at what they doing. <laughs> Read. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Right. So he looked in the door. He see idols. Read. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, and with every man his censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. So these is elders. <laughs> elders standing in front of these idols worshiping them. Right? But it took for, you know, Ezekiel, for the Lord to show Ezekiel, look, dig in that hole. Open that door. Look at what they doing. So you got to imagine. You might think, oh, he been in the truth eight years. He's a, he's a this, he's a 50, he's a captain, he's a whatever. Got it on lock. 
but you never really know we're brothers and sisters in the midst of, all right? Because we got to examine ourselves daily. It's some people, it's a lot of us that's in this truth right now. We say we in the truth, but we dealing with idols. <laughs> we dealing with real deal idols. And I'm, think, of, think about it like this. What is the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning? You know, you know, Lord, I ain't going to say, you know, probably a lot of us, maybe most of us can say the first thing we do is hit our knees and pray. But I, I doubt it. For some of us, I'm pretty sure the first thing that we do when we wake up in the morning is check our phone. Check our notifications. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Check our notifications. Well, you know, put food in our stomach, right? That's the first thing that we do. When the Lord, he's a jealous guy. He wants you to put him first. You see what I'm saying? It takes for you to really dig deep within yourself to be able to identify what carry you away from God. All right? Watch this. Keep reading. Then said he unto me, son of man. Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Have you seen what they do in the what? In the dark. What they do in the dark. Not when they sitting in the high seats in front of everybody in the courts and in the temple. No. It's what they do in the dark. In front of the people, they the ancients of Israel. They the instructors. They the leaders. They the ones that are showing you how to, how to get close to God. But in the dark. They're not even serving God. <laughs> They're serving idols. They're not following commandment number one. Read on. And every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. The, that's the mindset. The Lord seeth us not. He not seeing what I do in the dark. Read on. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again. And thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. So he said, hold on, Ezekiel, there's more. You got to think when Ezekiel saw that, these is ancients of Israel, bro. He was probably shocked. Like his world was like, what the hell? They in idolatry. These is the ancient, these are the, 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 the souls of Israel are committed to them. And they committed to idols. They not even serving the Lord. The Lord said, hey, pfft. It's more than that. It's deeper than that. Read on. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. Uh -huh. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now, you got to think, right? Now, you dig a little deeper. You see the women weeping for Tammuz. Now, it's dealing with women. A lot of us, we may be mighty in the scriptures, Strong in the Lord, known for putting in work, good reputation, stuff like that. But remember, it says, what do, your, what do your eyes wink at, right? A lot of mighty leaders, a lot of mighty men have fallen due to their wives. Not putting their wives in check. You know what I'm saying? Basically, they'll rebuke the hell out of a brother. They'll rebuke the whole congregation. But their wife, it's a different story. She wearing pants at the crib. She cooking on the Sabbath. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. That's, that's what happens when you dig a little deeper. Now, you, got, you know, as a man, you examine yourself, and then you got to think, how am I governing my marriage? Is my wife in order? Is my wife following me as I follow the Lord? Or... Am I allowing her to go astray? But I'm just keeping it in the dark. You see what I'm saying? Guess what that woman is to you? An idol. Because she, she is what's hindering you from serving the Lord with all your heart. Because you you breaking off a piece of that to let her continue in her nonsense. For real. That's, bro, that's a heavy thing in Israel, especially with leaders. But read on. Then said he unto me, 
Hast thou seen this, O son of man? You see this right here, Ezekiel, read on. Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. It's thee. more. <laughs> it's even more stuff than that. It's deeper than that. Come on, dig a little deeper, Zeke. Watch this. Read. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east. And they worshiped the sun towards the east. So now, you dig a little deeper, it's even more abominations, more idolatry. Watch this. Go to Ezekiel 24. So even with Ezekiel himself, the Lord had to show him something. All right? Ezekiel 24, verse 15. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, and verse 15. And also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. So now we read the scripture. That the Lord is a jealous guy. His name is Jealous. <laughs> we looked up the definition of jealous, right? And, you know, in the quotations, it said a jealous boyfriend. And you know the analogy with that, you know, a psycho boyfriend or whatever that got their jealousy issue, his girl can't even look in another man's direction. The Lord said in Ezekiel, I'm going to take away the desire of your eyes with a stroke. So you got to think, humans get strokes, <laughs> right? So the, the Lord is referring to a human that is the desire of Ezekiel's eyes. Read on. Yet neither shalt thou mourn, nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Come on. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thy head upon thee. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. Come on. So I speak unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died. So what was the desire of his eyes? His wife. Now this is Ezekiel 24. For 23 chapters, Ezekiel was a prophet of the Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was prophesying to the nation of Israel. But guess what? What a lot of people may not have known, unless the Lord opened the door for them to see it. You see what I'm saying? Ezekiel had an issue as far as when it came to his wife. His wife could hinder him from fully, wholeheartedly serving the Lord. And the Lord killed her to take her out of the way. We don't know what God we serving, bruh. We don't really be, we say we love God. The Lord will kill your damn wife. <laughs> you still going to love him then? You still going to love the Lord when he kill your wife? You can't get it in every night no more? You ain't got no, no, you know, T word to, to suck on every night? You see what I'm saying? You still going to love the Lord? That's what the Lord do. For real, watch this. Go to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1. This whole chapter, we ain't going to have time to read the whole chapter, but this whole chapter goes into the first commandment. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. All right? Start at verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, and verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Now, wait a minute. So you got this prophet, this dreamer of dreams, he says something, and it comes to pass. And he uses that to say, let's serve another God. Meaning he not serving the Most High, but he says something that came to pass. Why would the Lord allow that? You know what I'm saying? How is he not serving you, but he had the wisdom or whatever to say something to come to pass? What's the purpose of that? Verse 3. Verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. The Lord your God proveth you. So what is he doing? He testing your love, your loyalty for him. You see what I'm saying? 
I'm going to make it to where if somebody do something or say something, it come to pass and they tell you to follow another God. You ain't got to do this no more. You ain't got to keep my commandments no more. And I'm going to let it come to pass just to see if that's what's going to be able to take you away from me. See if that's what's going to grieve you with my buns. Now, I got all these rules and regu regulations. You got to keep my commandments with that false prophet over there that said something that came to pass. You ain't got to do all that over there with him. Why would the Lord allow that? To prove you. To prove you. Read on. To know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You see that? You, we got to go through them type of tests. That's why I said it must be heresies among you. It got to be false prophets that rise among you. Why? Because it's testing your loyalty to the Lord. He testing to see if you love him unconditionally. It's easy to love the Lord if... The only way somebody can be right about something is if they keep in the commandments. I'm going to make it to where somebody in idolatry, they worshiping Satan, but they saying stuff that come to pass. Just to see if you're going to stay true to me and stay on this side. Read on. Verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. Uh -huh. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. But damn, he said something that came to pass. The Lord said he got to die. Why? Read. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Because he's spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. So you got to think, right? The energy that we... Now, you know, we can't put nobody to death no more. You see what I'm saying? But you got ordinances that's still in place like Romans 16, 17, right? Somebody going contrary to the doctrine, right? right. Cut them off. Have no contact with them. Avoid them. Because what are they doing? They trying to take, turn you away from the Lord your God. So when stuff like that happens, these spirits manifest and get exposed. Now you put to the test. Is you still going to deal with them? You still going to hang around them? You still going to have contact with them? They tried to turn you away from your God. Your energy should be, no, he is dead to me. You see what I'm saying? We supposed to have that level of love and loyalty for the Lord. Now, you turned your back on the Lord. We I don't give a damn what we've been through, what all you done for me. None of that matters. You tried to turn me away from the Lord. You dead to me now. That's the, that's the level that the Lord want us to be at. And a lot of us not at that level. Read on. Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Read. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or the, thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul. Now you got to think. Now the Lord giving specifics. If your brother, that's the son of your mother, meaning your blood brother. Not just a regular brother, but your blood brother. <laughs> your sister, your mama, your daddy. Or your friend, which is as thine own soul. Meaning these is people in your life. That you can't imagine in yourself living without. You see what I'm saying? They as your own soul. God had to put a law in the Bible concerning these people. Read on. Entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy father. So, you know, in today's terms, that would be, you know, your grandmama that changed your diapers. You know what I'm saying? That spurred you. When them, you know, was over over their house all your life. You love them. You you know, you really love the hell out of them. They say, baby, man, you know, all your life you've been keeping Thanksgiving, and it ain't. I know you with. The, I know you with the Israelites, and I know y'all don't celebrate this stuff. But it ain't. It ain't. You ain't really celebrating it. You just doing it for me. 
You see what I'm saying? Enticing you secretly to do what? Partake in idolatry. Read. Namely of the gods of the people which are round about you. Uh -huh. Nigh unto thee and far off from thee. From the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Read. Thou shalt not consent unto him. Uh -huh. Nor hearken unto him. You don't listen to that person. Read. Neither shall thou I pity him. Neither shalt thou spare. Right. Don't uh, read on. Neither shalt thou conceal him. Right. So don't hide him. Right. Don't hide him. Don't spare him. No matter what the relationship you got with that person. But what? But thou shalt surely kill him. But God said you're supposed to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. You got to think about this. <laughs> we supposed to love the Lord so much that if somebody that we grew up knowing and loving all our life that we couldn't imagine ourselves living without, the moment that they tell you to do anything contrary to the Lord, anything contrary to the commandments in the Bible, you supposed to kill them. Now, you know, we can't kill nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're supposed to become dead to you. You're supposed to be able to cut them off. A lot of us not moving like that. We ain't rolling like that. We don't understand. The Lord is a jealous guy. He see you. He see you still going over there when you know they got certain stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, it's behind. It's in the dark. You, you show up on the Sabbath. You fringed up most high Christ bliss. You teaching on the street. But when nobody's around, you're dealing with idolaters, and you love them, and you're concealing it. <laughs> it's not, I don't know, oh, you're not posting that on Telegram. You see what I'm saying? The Lord said you're supposed to kill them, right? So in the spirit, we're supposed to be able to cut them people off because what? They will hinder you from loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You breaking off a piece for them. You being partial. Read on. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. Read. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. Uh-huh. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die. Why? Because he have sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Right. I freed you out of slavery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your loyalty, your love supposed to be for me first and foremost. If anybody try to violate that, you kill them. They got to die. That's the mindset you got to have. The only way you're going to have that mindset is if you love the Lord. Now you got to think, if this commandment was in effect today, right now, and the Lord put you to the test, yo, yo mama, <laughs> that you dearly, dearly love. She hit you up. Hey, it's so-and-so birthday you invited. According to the law, you got, you got to go and break her damn neck. You got to go smoke her. You see what I'm saying? Guess what? A lot of us would be grieved with that. A lot of us would be grieved with that thing. But the, the commandment itself is not grievous. It's not hard to kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? The commandment itself is not grievous. But what is it? It's that thing within you. It's that love that you have for that person that is really above the love that you have for the Lord. That's an idol in your heart, in your mind. That's what makes the commandments grievous. These idols in our heart. These things that we think we can't live without, that we can't let go. These things and these people. Listen, nothing or nobody matters. You know what I'm saying? Unless they following the Lord, period. That got to be your mindset. If it's not, you got a problem with applying the first commandment. Commandment one. From there. Go to chapter 8, verse 2. Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, and verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, 
whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Right. So I love y'all, you know, and I freed y'all out of bondage. Before I bring y'all into this promised land, I got to prove y'all. I got to see if y'all love me like I love y'all. Right? Read on. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. And did what? And, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. And suffered thee to hunger. Hunger. So the Lord, now, y'all ever seen them commercials, you know what I'm saying, where somebody acting a damn fool, and then they get a Snickers bar, and they turn back to they self, right? You got to think, when it, when it comes to stuff like hunger, you will literally, it changes you. <laughs> you you'll be hangry. Angry because you hungry, right? For real, that's a big thing. So it said the Lord suffered you. He allowed you to hunger. Read on. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Come on. Neither did thy fathers know. Read. That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So he did that in order to see if they was going to continue to obey him, to walk in his word, to do what he say, regardless if he was feeding them what they wanted to be fed or not. Meaning what? The Lord, the Lord always looked for us to have an unconditional love for them, love for him. Because when he freed us out of Egypt, out of bondage, we wasn't perfect. But he loved us and did that for us. Because he, he loved our forefathers. He, he, at the end of the day, he's not going to forsake his people. Right? We got to have an unconditional love for the Lord. Regardless if we're doing good or bad, we understand that we serve the Most High God. And it's a reward when we serve him, when we obey him. Whether it appears right then and there or not. That's faithfulness. That's loyalty. And the Lord tests our loyalty with things like hunger. All right? Get uh, Job 23, verse 12. Let's see what Job said. Now, mind you, now we're still dealing with the idols in your heart, believe it or not. Job 23, verse 12. The book of Job, chapter 23, and verse 12. Uh huh. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Read. I have esteemed the words of his mouth. More than my necessary food. Now think about it. You esteem the words of his mouth more than your necessary food. Right? The food that you need in order to survive. You find his words. You esteem his words above that, right? Now, we're still dealing with idols in your heart. A lot of us, you know, in general, you ask brothers, you know, what you... uh you know, what you need to work on, what you, you know. A lot of brothers will say, well, you know, I could study more. I could make more time to study. You know what I'm saying? But I be, I just be real busy and this, this, and that. Right? So, okay, you real busy. Now, did you eat today? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? I ate some cereal in the morning and I got, you know, I got me a burger from... You know what I'm saying? I got me a burger, I got me a sub sandwich, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, out of your busy schedule and all this and this and that, you're going to make yourself a way to get your necessary food. Job said that he esteemed the word of God above that. Can we, you got to examine that. Is, is we rolling in that spirit? You see what I'm saying? We eat. Four or five times a day. Do we read four or five chapters a day? A lot of us can't say that. That's something that you got to examine within your spirit. That means that what? Food will be an idol in your heart. Now, my, like, you got to think about, let's just say, now I'm going to use myself for an example, right? I've been a long day, went to camp, brought it out, or whatever. I come home, I'm starved. The first thing I do, I eat. Because, you know, we thought, well, I was, look, you got to have the food ready. I come in the crib, hey, greet me with the damn plate, right? 
So we gonna eat when we come home. We not skipping that meal when we come home. Why? Because we hungry. We put in work. We want to eat. But then after you eat, you get the itis. You know what I'm saying? And now, because in your mind, you was like, yeah, I'm going to eat. Then I'm going to get my chapter, knock my chapters out. I'm going to study. And then after you eat, you be like, hmm. you know, you doze off a little bit. Then you'll start to tell yourself, like, oh, man, I'm going to get them in in the morning. I'm going to double up tomorrow. You see what I'm saying? Mm-mm-mm. Nah, <laughs> that's a demon there. Leadership talk about that all the time. You get the, you know, you you up, you awake, you moving around doing this and this and that. But as soon as you open your Bible, you get sleepy. Why is that? You wouldn't have fallen asleep on top of your plate. You was woke for that thing. Well, you open your Bible, now you got a sleep demon. Now you can't stay awake. You can't continue reading. Remember, the Lord said he suffered us to hunger to prove us. We got to, gotta, like I said, we got to dig deep within our spirit, man, to really know if we applying the first commandment. From there, your wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15. Leadership, uh, like Bishop and I, he did the class on it this past Sabbath during Tabernacles. And uh, I'll praise to the Most High God. You know, I, was, I had the privilege of being around leadership, you know, at Tabernacles. I was in Alabama and whatnot, and I got to sit around the elders and, you know, the bishops, the deacons, the captains, you know, for a lot, a lot of time. I was able to spend a lot of time with them. And the night before Bishop Kanai did the class, they went into that. The Romans 7 and all that, that he was doing... They was in that thing for hours. It was a lot deeper than what y'all ended up getting. I'm just, you know. Hey. But that's, you know, that's the perks of being able to be around them great men. You know what I'm saying? When they not just behind a leadership table. But anyway, um, they went into this. And this is the true grief. Watch. Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 15. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 15. For the corruptible body. The what? The corruptible body. Meaning your flesh, read. Press it down the soul. Press it down the soul. Now remember, one of the synonyms for grievous was burdensome. What does a burden do? It presses you down. Right? So, mind you, you, you know the scriptures, man shall live by every word of God, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You want to read. When you read, you like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when you hungry, you can't focus. You sleepy. Nah, I'm too tired. You see what I'm saying? All of that is dealing with your flesh. Food that you put in your belly is not spiritual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sleep, getting rest, resting your body is not spiritual, right? But what hinders you from doing the spiritual things? That's flesh. You're not yourself when you're hungry. You're not yourself when you're tired. The corruptible body pressed down the soul. That's the grief. <laughs> That's what grieves you. It's not the commandments. It's your flesh. Read. And the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Your earthly tabernacle weighs down your mind. That's the burden. That's what's burdensome. That's what makes your walk hard. Commandment's not grievous. Your flesh is. Your flesh is what makes these things grievous. Right? From there, Romans 7. Romans 7, 22. Oh, this is dealing with commandment number one. Romans 7, 22. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. A lot of us can say that. Man, I love keeping the Lord's feast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I love reading about I love doing this. I love being a part of this and a part of that. I delight after the law of God, after the inward man. Read. But I see another law in my members. But it's something else there. Of course, you got the spirit. You desire to do this and this and that. But then you see something else. Another thing in your members. Read. Warring against the law of my mind. Uh-huh. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Bringing you into captivity or bondage or grief, fetters, chains. You see what I'm saying? To the flesh, to the law of sin in your members, to your corruptible body. You, make, you get caught in these moments where you serve your flesh you feed your stomach. You feed your lust. You, on social media, you got to ask yourself, right? Is it hard to read the Bible for an hour? You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, that's a long time to be reading the Bible, right? But you got to think about how easy it is to binge watch a damn Netflix series for five, six hours. Why is that so easy? But to stay in a book for one hour is so hard. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's that corruptible body. It's that law in your members, which is your flesh. That's what make it hard. The, the Netflix and all that, that's pleasing your flesh. It is, it's nothing to do that. It's nothing to stay up all night watching some BS. Why? Because you're entertained in the flesh. But when it comes to feeding your spirit, it's hard to stay up and focus for 30 plus minutes. You see what I'm saying? That's the stuff that we got to deal with. That's the stuff that we got to purge and really work on. I'm telling you from there. Go to pull up that, uh, that quote real quick. Uh, anything you can't fast from. Give Matthew 17. Pull up that quote. So this, you know, David Banner. Somebody in the world, like the scriptures say, the children of the world uh, be wiser than the children of light when it comes to certain stuff. So David Banner said, anything you can't fast from, you are a slave to. Now, remember, we were just dealing with hunger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't esteem the word above food. And that's just with fasting in general. But fasting doesn't just pertain to not eating and not drinking, you can fast from social media. Basically, he's saying, look, if you can't go a week without Facebook, you can't go a month without Instagram, right? You can't go uh, a week without looking at sports highlights or whatever. That means that you're a slave to that. That's bringing you in captivity to the law of your members. That's pressing down your soul. Give Matthew 17, verse 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 20. Come on. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, uh -huh. and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So think, look at this. This is the power that the Lord is able to give you. He can give you power to move mountains. All right? Read on. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So with certain things that you're not able to purge out of your spirit, except by praying and fasting. Some stuff you really, you, you will say, I'm not a slave to that, but you've never fasted from it. You do it every day. You use it every day. You really don't know whether that's an idol in your heart or not until you put yourself to the test to fast from it. Then you see like, damn, you pick up your phone. You, it's a fight. It's a struggle to not get on that thing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? For real. That's why it's important to fast and to pray because when you do that, you deny yourself. You deny your flesh. And that's building your spirit up. All right, from there. Get Isaiah 58, verse 6. So these are scriptures we went over dealing with the Day of Atonement. 
And, uh, you know, I went over a class called The Power of the Purge. Basically, when we able to purge our spirits from all of these fleshly things or whatever, we draw near to the Lord, the Lord draw near unto us, and we able to do very powerful things in the spirit, right? But we got to be able to certain stuff in order for the Lord to draw near unto us how he wants to. We got to fast. Watch this. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? To do what? To loose the bands of wickedness? So fasting loosens the bands or the bonds or the shackles and the chains of wickedness. Fasting will make these things less grievous unto thee. But we don't fast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of us struggle with fasting. Fasting will build your spirit up to be able to overcome the things that you need to overcome. The scriptures say, he that overcometh <laughs> will inherit all things. You got to be able to fast to loosen the bands. Certain wickedness that you deal with that's inside of you that other people may not see. You got to fast to purge them things out. All right, this that goes into applying that first commandment. I love the Lord God so much. I know He's a jealous God, so I'm gonna leave this thing alone. It's a desire of mine eyes. It's something that I, I feed into that more than I feed into the scriptures. You see what I'm saying? We gotta be able to fast. All right, from there, get a uh, Second Corinthians ten. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10, in verse 3. So remember, it said the bands of wickedness, right? A band, meaning it's something that, you know, it has a hold on you. Fast and we'll loosen that. Read what you got. For though we walk in the flesh, uh -huh. we do not war after the flesh. The warfare that we fight in is not after the flesh. It's spiritual. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but mighty through God. Read. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. The pulling down of strongholds, meaning bands of wickedness. <laughs> Things that got a hold on your spirit that keep you from wholeheartedly, fully serving the Lord, loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. We, you need to utilize the weapons of the Lord, the scriptures that he give us, the counsel, the, you know what I'm saying, the, all of the things written that he tell us to do in order to pull down these strongholds and loosen the bands of wickedness. Only these weapons, only the scriptures, the full armor of God will empower you to pull down these strongholds. All right, read on. Casting down imaginations. In every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Right. So notice imaginations. It's dealing with the mind. Because remember, you had elders that set up idols in their mind, in their heart. All right. Read on. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, in Romans 7, it said that his flesh brings him to into captivity to the flesh to serve, you know, the deeds of the body, the lusts, the things that turn our spirit against God. Right here, it's saying utilize the, the spiritual weapons that God gave us to bring every thought to captivity to Christ. So, damn. So, I'm in captivity regardless? <laughs> Real quick, in Matthew 11. So, yes. The thing is, when you're in captivity to the flesh, mind you, this flesh comes from the dirt, the dust of the ground. That's where this flesh is going to end up, back into the dust of the ground. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So if you serve the flesh, if you are in captivity to that, that's going to be your end result, death. But if you serve the Lord, just like he is eternal and immortal and all of that, you serve him. That's the reward that you're going to reap. 
everybody is in captivity. <laughs> That's why the Lord said, you can't serve two masters. Everybody is serving something. Everybody is either serving Satan or serving the Lord, whether they believe it or not, or know it or not. All right? Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, and verse 28. Read. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, Read. and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. So Christ is saying, take my yoke upon you. Instead of that yoke that you got serving your flesh, being in cap captivity to your flesh, bring your thoughts into captivity to me. Take my yoke upon you. Read. And learn of me. Uh -huh. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Read. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. So if you come into captivity to me, I'm going to give you rest. Why? Because the commandments are not oppressive. <laughs> it's not oppressive slavery. You know what I'm saying? You're going to actually find a rest. Bring yourself into captivity to Christ. You're going to find rest to your soul. Read. For my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. Read. And my burden is light. Because the commandment's not grievous. You see what I'm saying? But loving the flesh, that's why the scriptures talk about foolish and hurtful lusts and things of that nature. Our flesh, serving our flesh always got us in trouble. It always got us sorrow. You see what I'm saying? The flesh always put us in them situations. With the Lord, serving the Lord, no, you're going to find rest for your soul. So you got to transfer the yoke. <laughs> you got to transfer the yoke from wickedness to serving the Lord your God. All right, from there, get, go back to Sirach 6, verse 25. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 25. Uh -huh. Bow down thy shoulder and bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. Right, bringing your thoughts into captivity to Christ. Why? Because you're going to find rest in that captivity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Don't be grieved with her bonds. Read. Come unto her with all. No, come unto her with thy whole heart. But you see how you got to come unto Christ, unto wisdom, unto the Lord. You see how you got to come? You got to come with your whole heart. That goes back to commandment number one. You got to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. You got to come with your whole heart. Read. And keep her ways with all thy power. And with all thy strength. You got to come with all your strength. Right? So we got to, you got to think. If it's situations where it's hard for you to think, to do the things that's written, that means you have to strengthen yourself to be able to overcome that. If you're not coming to the Lord with all your strength, guess what? You're going to fall to your temptations, to your lusts, to what your flesh wants you to do. Because you're not serving the Lord with all your power. You're not putting forth all your strength. So some stuff you're not going to overcome. Some stuff you're just going to be like, I'm chalking this up to 2 Corinthians 12. Thorn. You see what I'm saying? Because you ain't, you ain't taking the proper... Steps like fasting, praying, doing those things to strengthen your spirit to overcome that. Right from there. Go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51 verse 10. We read this a lot. Psalms 51 verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 10. Come on. Creating me a clean heart. So we got to ask the Lord to create in us a clean heart. Because <laughs> there's things in our heart that carry us away. We dig deep enough, we'll see that it gets worse and worse. We dig deep enough, we'll see that we are wretched men. <laughs> For real. So we got to ask the Lord to create in us a clean heart. Circumcise the foreskins of our heart. Read. Oh God, uh -huh. and renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit within me. Read on. Cast me not away from thy presence. Come on. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Read. Restore unto me 
the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Uphold me with your free spirit because your spirit is not in bondage to the flesh. The spirit of the, spirit of the Lord is not subject to this. So that's what's able to uphold you and strengthen you when your corruptible body is pressing you down. You see what I'm saying? We got to, we got to be upheld with his free spirit. But read the top of verse 12. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And that's the part that we, you know, we just usually just read through that. Just like how nah, I just read through that, right? Rest, why, why did David say that? Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Get near my 8 verse 10. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. You're not going to be able to apply commandment number one if you don't take joy in serving, serving the Lord. For You know how they say in relationships with the, you know, that's why you got to live joyfully with the wife of your youth because once you lose the joy in a relationship, that's when the relationships start to crumble. You see what I'm saying? You no longer want to do stuff and do the, you desiring something else. Something else is now the desire of your eyes instead of your spouse. That's why we got to be able to maintain joy in this truth. Joy for the Lord. Read what you got. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 10. Come on. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them uh -huh. for whom nothing is prepared. Read. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Come on. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see that gem right there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That the book of Nehemiah gave us? The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's what's going to strengthen you. That's what's going to give you the power to really love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. You got to take joy in it or else you're going to be pressed down by your flesh. You're going to give in to the flesh. That's why David said, well, he's restoring to me the joy of your salvation. Because that's what's going to strengthen me to fully serve you. All right, from there. Get Exodus 15. So I, I'm going to just show an example of how the flesh can hinder, you know, or take away that joy. And you got to be able to identify that and catch that. When it, all this stuff happened for the Lord to prove us, to prove our love for him. Exodus 15 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. And spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Right. So this is going into what? When we just left out of Egypt and the Lord destroyed all the Egyptians in the Red Sea that was pursuing after us. So we singing. We taking joy in his salvation. Right? Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand. Uh -huh. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Three. And Miriam answered them. Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So the men and the women, they all turned up. They singing to the Lord. Why? Because he just saved them. Yay, the Lord. Yay, yay. We love you, God. Right? He just saved us out of bondage. Now read 24. Verse 24. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? So as soon as they got thirsty... <laughs> They, they had a lack of water, something that your flesh needs, right? Now they murmuring against the Lord. What happened to the joy? What happened to the joy? And that's what be happening in this truth. We be on fire, zeal be on a thousand. We put in work until we lose a job. Or we got to put away an unbelieving spouse. Or, you know what I'm saying? Then, now we showing up to the school less. Now we putting in less work. Now we studying less. We attending class less. That means that your love for the Lord is conditional. The Lord is looking for unconditional love. That's why he would suffer you or allow you to go through thirst, to go through hunger, to go through tribulations. You know what I'm saying? 
It's to prove your love for him. It got to be unconditional. Go to Numbers chapter 14. We finna close it out. Numbers chapter 14, verse 23. The book of Numbers, chapter 14 and verse 23. So mind you, we're we dealing with our forefathers in the wilderness, right? How they, as soon as it wasn't going all the way good for them, they switched up on the Lord. They didn't fully love the Lord no more, right? Well, watch what he said. Read that. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Uh huh. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. Because he what? Had another spirit with him. So he wasn't like the rest of the Israelites who only loved the Lord conditionally when everything was going right for them. No, he had another spirit and what? It hath followed me fully. And followed God fully. <laughs> Meaning with all his mind, with all his heart. With all his soul. Read on. Him will I bring into the land, wherein too he went, and his seed shall possess and it. And his seed shall possess it. So you got to, just dealing with our forefathers in the wilderness that was saved out of slavery. Before they could get to their promised land, before they could make it to that kingdom, they had to be proved. And he saw that Caleb, it didn't matter what condition they was in. He was wholeheartedly serving and dedicated to the Lord. God said, that spirit right there, that's the spirit that I'm looking for. Likewise, in these last days, you got you to gotta be that type of spirit. You got to have that type of spirit if you want to be saved out of this captivity and brought into the gates of the kingdom of heaven. You got to apply commandment one. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, you got to follow the Lord fully, fully. It's not conditional. It's not with the condition you in the truth with such and such. As long as he over me, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as I still got this job, yeah, I'm going to come to camp every day. You see what I'm saying? No. You got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And whatever is getting in the way of that, whatever is the hindrance, you got to be willing to mortify it, kill it, get it out the way, purge it. If you don't, I'm telling you, you're going to be judged accordingly. So that's it. All right. That was hammer time. <laughs> Applying the first commandment. Lord is willing to deal with what he needed to do to get our spirit right. Like I said, it's self-examination. A lot of us. I'm telling you, we dig deep enough, we got all manner of wretchedness within us that we got to purge out and overcome if we want get to get through them gates. We got we to gotta apply commandment one, loving the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. No partiality. Lord is a jealous God. He not going to allow us to share our desire, our daily, you know, zeal. With Instagram, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You checking Instagram and doing all that more than you reading the Bible. The Lord is taking that stuff into the into account. If he killed the wife of a prophet, you know what I'm saying? In order for him to fully serve him, what you think he'll do in your case? All right, so we got to meditate on that. Lord is willing, y'all got edified. Tune in and fix your face. Most high in Christ bless. Yeah.